After the road trip with my dad that gave birth to the way of the player, I wanted to go full Deschambeau and prove this low stress golf works. So I entered a Hooters Golf Series event at the Vintage Club. This is a course I hadn't played before and the prior three rounds before this were played with my antiques. It was time for a stress-free golf extravaganza. I had only one playing objective for this round on a new course. Hit stress-free shots. What that implies, players, is a process. 1. Get all available information for the shot in front of us. 2. Hit the simplest, most comfortable shot at any given moment. 3. Remove ego from decision making. 4. Plan each hole to get our best position to approach the green. 5. Plan and commit to each shot. 6. Tack pins that suit our shot shape. 7. Hit only shots we know how to hit. 8. Keeping a positive or neutral mood throughout the round. 9. Monitor the calorie intake between hole 12 and 15. There were no outcome-based goals and score was the last thing on my mind. What a player! What a player! <laughs> With the water left and the bunker on the right, a 3-iron is not the best choice for a second shot of the day. A simple 5-iron too short of the green would have set me up an easy chip onto the green to score an easy birdie. Oh, what a prick. Hard. Players, don't beat yourself up for a shuri that leaves you in a good position. Not an ideal way to start, but the practice green was much slower than the course greens. The second hole is begging to be played. The pin is in the middle, so I'm going middle. <laughs> Downhill chips onto down slopes are best to avoid. I was thinking of doing a floppy type of shot, but I need to have the self-discipline to only hit shots I know how to hit. So a standard chip shot into the fringe to take some speed off and let it trickle down, hopefully to about one foot. Go ball, baby. Go Get in there, baby. Go in. Go in. in this moment, a big slice was super stress-free. I grip down and do the Robin Matthew Williams slice. Pin is on the right and there's tons of space left to approach from. Plus, all I see in front of me, in line with the pin, is a massive bunker. I was 50-50 on the putt here, but since it was downhill and over some fluff, I thought chipping it onto the very front and using the spin would get me inside two feet for the putt. For me to putt at that moment was high stress. Here's a perfect example of needing maximum info on a new course. I use the rangefinder to get the distance to the bunker. I may be able to hit a 3-iron into it, but a 4-iron was surely short of it. If I hit it straight at the bunker nice and smooth, I'll be golden. The pin is on the right. So I started at the pin with a golf sidekick draw. What a shot, man. Come on. Man, that was a great shot. What a play. Good. Oh, man. Come on, man. 
The hole is not long, and the caddy was trying to get me to go for the green. That brings all sorts of scores into the picture. Even pros make mostly pars. Par is a good score. I think I'll just set myself up to hit one of my black wedges into the green. Sometimes, we hit puffy shots, just gotta roll with it. I was thinking about a bunker style flop shot, but again, I opted for the standard chip shot. All we need to do here is get the ball inside 4 or 5 feet, and it's par time. We don't need to be holding every chip or getting greedy. Some situations are better than others, just get it on the green. The pin's on the left, so I aim to the fat part of the green and hope for a draw. Go, 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 go. In. Go in. Uh, Must be big, <laughs> Have I mentioned how much I love the Striction 2 iron? I highly recommend this range if you suck at long irons. I'm even thinking of buying the 3 iron as well. With the pin in the center and loads of green left, I set up at the pin. With a draw or even a pull, I will have a lot of options left of the pin. Here's a situation where the green side fairway looks like it will run like a green. Often, a putt is a good play here if you suck at chipping. I did the next best thing by using a 7 iron. A lob wedge off this tight lie onto the front of this green would never stop in time. I know you feel the pressure of the money making a video clip and that you cannot play like that. <laughs> Lol, this is why I don't like to putt from off the green. I suck at it. <laughs> This caddy was cute and could read greens like a monster. Pitya ignored her half the time or I would have been five under. Here's where we often go off the rails. We miss many putts by a ball hair and get frustrated. So we try force it. The key is to be patient, remain in control, plant your feathers and you'll be rewarded. Oh my. 
my God. Like okay. father, like son. <laughs> We've reached hole 13 and my mind starts thinking about not screwing up. This is high stress mode, so I bring out the trusty two iron and tell myself, don't screw up. And what happens? Ooh, a little club toss. Naughty, naughty. You did that to yourself, Boiki. I couldn't do much here, and while the lowest stress shot was a simple wedge shot hit 90 degrees to the right, I could see a medium stress shot over the trees with a 7 iron. Was this the 13th hole screw up we've come to expect? Okay, snack time. I was trying to fade it again, but I was hitting it too hard because it's actually a high stress shot. I hadn't worked on my fades with this new two iron yet. Often, I cover up my insecurity with a shot by hitting the ball harder, usually to my detriment. Yes. Shall we begin? Let's begin? We've got Texas on the left, the pin here, with water on the right. It's super safe up on the left. Take me to Texas! This one had me perplexed. Lob wedge onto the front and the ball's a goner. A putt is not in my wheelhouse. A bump and run was the best option, but picking the spot is the trickiest part of this because of all the fairway between me and the ball. But on the tee, if you offered me a seven footer for birdie, would I take it? You bet I would, so no need to be greedy.
I was extremely uncomfortable over this chip, but the caddy left my bag on the next tee. This club was just wrong. More loft, and we could land it on the front. And less loft, we can land it a foot or two short. But this one was in between. This was high stress. With a rangefinder, I ping the distance to the stake in the fairway to know I can carry the stream easily. That gives you maximum confidence for ultimate low stress. I knew my score on this tee box because the DD told me. I decided to try even harder for the birdie to get the 70. Overall, this was a very stress-free round. It's a process, and with no final moment of happiness or perfection ever possible, we must accept it will take time and find pleasure in the constant pursuit of excellence. Players, I find this way of playing golf moves you toward being a happier person away from the course too. You have to try it out to understand what I mean. A lot of us tie our self-esteem to our golf game. A good game, and we have a great week. A bad game, and the weekend is destroyed by focusing on the process of constant improvement internally as a player. With less attachment to the outcome, you'll find everything is better.